Hi mga mommy! Welcome back to my channel, another mommy diary and this time we will be talking about labor and delivery. If you want to know what my preparations are, my tips and advice, please keep on watching. So mga mommy, before I go with the advice, let me ask you a question. Would you like to go on a normal delivery or a cesarean delivery? So maybe you're wondering why I'm asking kung ano yung choice of delivery nyo, either normal or cesarean delivery. Well, actually, there are women who opted go for a cesarean delivery, those women that are already high risk of their pregnancy at hindi na nila kayang mag-normal delivery. And also, meron din namang babae na hindi capable to go on a normal delivery. So, that, so if you're a mom who opted to go for a normal delivery, how would you actually prepare your body for normal delivery? Here's tip number one exercise but before you do any activity make sure you ask your ob when would be the best time for you to do the exercise and if you are really allowed to do minimal activity or exercise why because if you're having sensitivity during your pregnancy like complication high blood pressure or whatsoever for sure your ob will not advise you to do any activity even just 15 minutes a day, 15 to 20 minutes a day of walking, not speed walking, just a regular way of you of walking kasi hindi mo na rin kakayanin yung sobrang bilis na walking, especially if, you're, if your tummy or your belly is big already. For sure, the ob they will not advise you to do activities on early pregnancy, on early stage of pregnancy because ayaw nilang mag to sa miscarriage. So for sure, activity will always start on the third trimester. I mean, believe later part ng third trimester. So, walking would actually be the best exercise for that. Aside from walking, you can also start doing squatting. But, before kayo mag-squat, make sure na gawin nyo muna yung highest level ng squatting before you go lower and lower and lower until you reach yung pinaka-maximum or peak ng squatting. Bakit? Huwag yung bibiglain yung katawan nyo, especially kung hindi pa naman kayo due kasi baka mamaya mapaana kayo. Everything, every exercise na gagawin nyo, make sure na i-coordinate nyo sa OB nyo at alam niya kung ano yung mga activity na ginagawa nyo. Kasi siya din mismo magsasabi sa'yo kung advisable ba sa'yo na mag-squatting ka or walking lang. Kasi hindi lahat ng activity or exercise na para sa pregnant women ay eh, applicable para sa lahat ng buntis. I remember on the later part of my third trimester, my OB advised me actually to, to watch my diet, not to gain so much weight if I really wanted to pursue for a normal delivery because as per her, the more you gain weight, the more it would be complicated and the more it would be hard for me to go for a normal delivery. So she told me if you can monitor your weight per week and watch the calories that you're eating, then much better. There are even ob who actually extend their help by recommending you to a dietitian. So they will be the one to advise you what would be the proper diet food to intake until the end of pregnancy or until you reach your due date. So if if you're lucky or you're blessed enough to have an ob like that, take an advantage, communicate with the dietitian, tell the dietitian what are the, the food that you eat, what are the food that you cannot eat, so at least they can recommend you what would be the best set of meals that you can take every day. Tip number three. Learn about breathing exercise and pushing techniques. There are some hospital, like the hospital that I went to in uh, Zoleka, Dubai, they have or they offer classes, free classes for breathing exercise, like in preparation for labor, pushing techniques, and whatsoever. So I think they do it every Friday around 8:30. And not only that, they also provide other classes in preparation for motherhood. So if if in case that you already plan to which hospital you wanted to deliver, ask them if they are providing such classes so you can attend, whether it's a paid or not if if it's your first time to deliver i think it's better for you to attend the classes so at least you can prepare your yourself ahead of time para hindi ka rin mahirapan those were my top three health related advice when it comes to preparation for labor and delivery so aside sa mga health related tips and advice meron pa akong advice na may share sa inyo ano yun tip number one plan where to deliver or which hospital. If in case you already chosen the hospital, better doon na rin kayo magpa-check up. Bakit? If in case, God forbid, 
may nangyari and in the, may instance na kailangan kayong dalhin sa hospital. At least nandun na yung history nyo. Nandun na lahat ng record nyo, laboratories and whatsoever. Andun na rin yung OB guide ninyo na pwede nalang tawagan anytime. At least maa-assist nila kayo na hindi nyo na kailangan magpaliwanag pa ulit-ulit kung ano yung mga history nyo. And for tip number two, ito ang mga mami, practical na advice. Before you buy anything or purchase anything for your baby para sa delivery, make sure you ask first your hospital what they can provide to your baby and to you during delivery. Why do you have to communicate with the hospital? Because there are hospitals who already provide things for delivery like yung toiletries ni baby, yung baby wash, diaper. In my case, hindi hindi nagamit yung mga dala kong baby wash and diaper kasi sila na yung provide And for, for me, personally, hindi na rin sila humingi ng maternal diaper kasi sa kanila na rin ang galing. So you have to ask them what are the things they can provide so at least hindi na kayo madoble-doble pa ng bilay. And for tip number three, settlement of the bill. Make sure you prepare ahead of time. Nine months ang nilalaan sa'yo para mag-prepare mag ka sa gagasusin mo sa delivery. If you are covered by insurance, make sure you ask your insurance how much is the coverage. So at least you can prepare ahead of time kung magkano yung idadagdag mo. And if you're self-paid, wala kang insurance, make sure every month naglalaan ka ng pera para pambayad mo sa ospital. Hindi yung nakatenga ka sa ospital, hindi kayo makalabas mag-ina kasi wala kayong pambayad. Nine months, mami. Huwag sayangin ang siyam na buwan nang hindi nag-iipon. Okay. To help you save or para makapag-prepare ka sa pera, ask the hospital kung magkano ba yung chine-charge nila pagka normal and cesarean delivery. Bakit kailangan alamin mo yung dalawa? Kasi you never know. If you're already forecasting yourself that you will go on a normal delivery and then all of a sudden something happened and then you will go for an emergency cesarean section. So, kailangan meron kang pondo. Don't think only on one side ng story pagdating sa pregnancy. Not everybody would go on a normal delivery. So, always prepare ahead of time. So, mga mami, aside sa mga tip na binigay ko, health-related man siya o hindi, ang pinakamahalaga is i-prepare mo yung utak mo sa kung anong pwedeng mangyari. Huwag laging one-sided. Huwag mong iisipin na dahil gusto mo normal delivery, normal delivery ka bilog ang mundo. Pwedeng maaring normal delivery ka, pero pagdating mo doon, cesarean ka pala. Ang sasabi ko to, kasi, I went through that. Why? Napaka-possessive ko sa pag exercise sa paglalakad. Like sa trabaho, hindi ako masyadong umuupo. Gusto ko lakad ako ng lakad. Lagi ako may activity kasi sabi ko, gusto ko normal delivery. Hindi Nung end ng, ng trimester, yung third trimester ko, I watch what I eat. Hindi ako ganun na nagdadagdag ng timbang kasi gusto ko nga normal delivery. And lahat ng laboratories ko, everything was normal. And then ang ending, cesarean ako. Yes, mga mami, you heard it right. Despite of the exercises, despite of the diet, yes, cesarean section ako. I'm not discouraging you not to do exercise or I'm not discouraging you na i-avoid yung mga tips ko kasi every pregnancy, every woman is different. Sa akin, nagkaroon lang ng instance na kailangan ng i-open kasi 16 hours na akong nagle-labor at hindi na nag-open yung cervix ko. And nagkaroon na ako ng grade 2 to 3 na may conium stain. So, nag-decide na ang doktor na kailangan na akong buksan. So, ayoko nang i-prolong yung agony. Ay, ayoko namang mapahamak yung anak ko. So, I decided, okay, go with the cesarean section. Doon sa mga mami na nag-look forward for a normal delivery at hindi na normal delivery, don't get disappointed. Don't get frustrated. It doesn't mean na hindi mo siya inire. It doesn't mean na hindi ka ina. Ina ka pa din. It doesn't make you less of a mom kung hindi mo siya inire. Yung pinagdaanan mo ng labor, yung hiwa, recovery and everything, that makes you a, a tough and strong mother. Mommy, when it comes to labor and delivery, there's no perfect preparation. Okay? Pagdating mo doon, maraming pwedeng mangyari. Minsan yung na, napag-aaralan mo or yung mga natututunan mo, nakakalimutan mo pag nandun ka na sa sobrang hirap at sa sobrang sakit. Sabi nga nila, pag naglilibor o nanganganak na ang isang ina, ang isang paa niya inasa ko kayo, totoo yun, napakahirap. Always expect the worst, always expect that it's going to be very painful, pero everything will be worth it. So, proper conditioning, not just physical but mentally and also financially. So, yun lang yung mga dapat nating paghandaan. And dasal lang palagi, 
magiging maayos din ng lahat after ng lahat ng hirap at sakit makikita mo yung anak mo and napakasaya so, mami hanggang dun mo lang chikahan natin ituloy natin sa mga susunod na video para sa mga bago sa channel ko make sure to make it a habit to, to stay and to visit, mag subscribe kayo like and share this video para marami pa tayong mahatak ng mga mami you can also follow me on my other social media sa instagram at mgracy limang e mga mami, bisitahin nyo ko doon maging magkumari din tayo sa instagram so until our next video, bye!